I love that intro. That's awesome. What's up guys? Patriot Prime here today and welcome to the channel. Today's video is part one of a series I'm going to do on the Generation 1 gimmicks. We all remember in 1984 when the Transformers first came out, they kept it simple. It was robot to vehicle. You had your robot to truck, jet, car, gun, tape deck, what have you, one form to another. But as the line progressed, Hasbro thought us 10-year-old consumers needed something a little bit more, so they introduced lines like the Headmasters, the Target Masters, the Power Masters, Duocons, Triple Changers, all these different things coming out to appease to us 10-year-old consumers who were, of course, the ones buying the toys, or better yet, our parents were. So welcome to part one of my gimmick series, and today we're going to go over the line that everybody loves to hate, The Pretenders. of you got the joke with that opening song. If you did, you're an OG, just like me, old guy. So now, let's talk about the Pretenders. Now first and foremost, I'm going to talk about the North America release of the Pretenders because I know that they were featured heavily in Japan. I just don't know that much about it and I know this video will not be very interesting if you're just watching me read Wikipedia off that computer screen right there. So let's get into it. The Pretenders, as you know, were Transformers that hid within these monster or human shells. These split open and revealed the Transformers within. Almost like a cyborg from the Terminator. You had a flesh wrapped around an endoskeleton. So it was kind of a neat concept, kind of a neat story. Uh, I enjoy the Decepticon versions a lot more than the Autobots. I mean, you think about it, monsters versus humans in fat spacesuits. I just, I dig the monsters better. Now, the storylines were funny. In the comics, I think Pretenders were introduced in issue 40, and the whole idea was, during the Marvel Comics run, you know, everybody's hating Transformers. They, there's this robo-rage going around, and <clears throat> Decepticon leader Scorponok at the time decided, hey, let's hide our robot forms within these creatures. So it makes a lot of sense, you know, 30 years later, yeah, I'm afraid of a giant robot, so let's hide within a giant bat monster. But hey, it was the 80s. But Marvel Comics was the only way we could actually get to know the characters of the Pretenders. They were not featured at all in the cartoon here in the States. They were in Japan, but not here. You want to see them on TV? You only saw them in a commercial. So it's up to Marvel Comics to, here's a good one, flesh out these characters, and they did an outstanding job doing it. Some of the stories were ridiculous. You had two pretenders go off to a planet of Amazon women to find energy, an energy source somewhere, or maybe Snoo Snoo. Then you had a pretender become a Hollywood movie star, and then you had pretenders climbing the Empire State Building. So there's your ridiculous stories. But then you had writers come in and take pretenders like Bludgeon and create this fantastic character that's still utilized today in the comics. And my favorite pretender of all, Thunderwing, who became leader of the Decepticons. But that's enough about the Marvel comics. We're here to talk about the toys and how horribly awful, wonderful, great they are. Okay, what we have right here is the first wave of Pretenders from 1988. I've got three Autobot and three Decepticon. Now how these came out was each set, they came out with a land, sea, and air version. So this was the air, land, 
C for the Autobot. Land, air, C for the Decepticons. Now how these worked, we'll use Cloudburst here for an example. As you had the outer shell all equipped with weapons, belt, and a helmet. And so what would you do is one weapon would stay with the shell, one weapon could be utilized for the shell or the robot inside. So normally how this worked, it's been a while since I've done this, you have to pop the belt off, take the helmet off, and then you simply split the shell apart and the robot is inside. Take him out, unfold the feet, bring the arms out, and in Cloudburst case he has little wings. I'm kind of backwards. Little wings he can fold out. And there is his robot mode. And then you can take the shell, put it back together, trick. Put the belt back on. And there we go. Of course take the gun out of the shell's hand. It has a little peg here that fits into the robot hand. So what you have right there is how the pretenders worked. You have two figures in one. Now these things, the paint on a lot of them was terrible. As you can see, this guy is in not the best of shape. I was able to touch up the black myself, but his red and gray is all beat up. And the problem with finding these guys on the secondary market is they're always missing pieces. As you saw, this guy alone comes with a belt and a helmet. Now when you go for a Decepticon, move these guys out of the way. We'll do Skull Grin here. It's the same thing. Now his belt's a little bit more difficult. It actually has a belt loop with notches. So you take this apart. Split the character. Of course, he doesn't have a helmet to worry about. Robot's inside. Same thing, take him apart. Take the guns. Split those apart. And then you have the little pegs like on the other character, that will peg into his hands. And I'm just going to put Skullgrin's belt to the side, but there is the Decepticon version. Now of course they are Transformers so they have to transform, so Skullgrin being a land-based character turns into a tank. So he'll take the guns out, Flip his fists around. Let's see. Fold the feet down. I'm trying to remember. Oh, here we go. Oops. Let's see. Only take the weapons. There we have what is called on the bio a Cybertronian tank. Now all of the pretenders pretty much transform the exact same way. Take the weapons out, fold the feet down, fold the legs around or up. I believe it's up with this guy.
Oops. Let me turn the head around. So right there, air base vehicle. There's his jet mode. These are two of the better looking characters that transform. We'll get to some terrible ones right now. All right, here is the second wave of the first set of pretenders that came out. Bugly, Iguanas, and Finback, Air, Land, and Sea. And just to let you know throughout the rest of the video, I only collected the Decepticon pretenders. Other than the three Autobots you saw earlier, I was just not a big fan of the fat-suited humans as the shells. So I'm a big, uh, really big fan of the monsters. Though. I mean, these monster shells are awesome. Very well detailed. Just, I just dig these a lot more. But, unfortunately, even though these guys have much better shells than Wave 1, the vehicle modes for the robots are terrible. And I'm going to show you just with Iguanas here. There's just there's no effort with these vehicle modes. Now this here I'm taking off can actually be a weapon to be held with the Iguana figure, but I used an old Predacon sword. I thought that looked a little better. So anyway, we're going to take Iguanas in a robot, turn him into a motorcycle. Flip him around, spin the seat, bring the arms up. And then the legs back and around. Just like the others, you just fold it in half. Yeah, it looks like a motorcycle, doesn't it? You take this part, which is the wheels, can't remember, might be this way, nope, I was right the first time, hop those in, you can take the gun to pop on back, and so there is your motorcycle mode, so they say, whoops, earthquake. Now the big excuse is these alt modes are terrible, so they just call it Cybertronian. Now just give you another example. Let's use him. He's an easy one to transform. Take his gun out. Just like the others. Arms up. Feet back. Actually put his arms down. Let's see. He's got little wings that come out. You take his gun, put it on his back, and that is your C vehicle. It's just a robot doing a very kinky yoga pose. Eh, what the heck. Let's show you Bugly. A lot of these have to utilize the weapons to actually form the vehicles. Once again, fold the feet. Flip the legs over, or under in his case. Arms back. Little wings out. Then you take the, let's see, it's been a while since I've done this. Maybe. Uh, you bring the arms up. There we go. Then you slide these guns into these little ports. And there is one very aerodynamic spaceship. This is where the pretenders get a lot of their hate. The vehicle modes are terrible. I mean, there's just no getting around it. But that can that concludes the first wave of the 1988 large pretenders. Now here is the second wave of pretenders also known as the small pretenders. The reason they're called that let's compare bludgeon here to whoops Skullgren from earlier but pretty considerable size difference there. 
Get him out of the way. We've already talked about you. Now, one of the big differences with these guys is a lot of the inner robot actually had to go on the shell of the outer robot. I'm not don't have the others in there, but Bludgeon, for example, his inner robot turns into a tank, so the turret is actually the shield for the robot. Same concept. You take the helmet off, split the body to release the robot from the inside. You put that back together. And then a parts former, more or less, you take the turret off. And there's bludgeon in tank mode. Very simple figure, no wheels, no nothing. Get ready for this transformation. Pull his arms up, move his feet back, pop his head up, and that's it. Remove the purple turret, and there's his handgun. Another reason why they're called the small pretenders. There we go. Big, big difference. Now, of course, this line here, consisting of Octo Punch, Bludgeon, and the awesomely mustachioed Stranglehold. That's what Burt Reynolds did in the 80s. These guys were featured heavily in the comic book, and therefore, these guys go for a lot of money complete. Part of the reason being these tiny little pieces that tend to pop off and get lost. I think a bludgeon complete anymore runs for about $300. Of course, I modified mine a little bit to make sure they look like the comic counterparts with maces and swords, a trident, and even for bludgeon, for you crafty people, I put a lens made of plastic water bottle inside his helmet. It's just taped in. I don't glue it. Just to add for a little bit more effect to these characters. And this guy here actually became leader of the Decepticons in the comic. Now here we have the pretender beasts. Instead of turning into monsters, they turned into giant armored animals, such as the wolf and warthog. This is Carnivac and Snarler. I believe the Autobot versions was a bear and a saber-toothed tiger. So unlike the other pretenders, which uh, out popped a robot that turned into a vehicle, with these guys, out pops a robotic version of a wolf or a robotic version of a boar. Of course, you can take the weapon from the shell and the whoops, robot version can use it. Anyway, just like the rest of them, this will turn into a robot. Flip around. Or how to do it. Of course, the problem with any of these beast transformers, they've got all this junk in the trunk. And there is Carnivac in robot mode. Now once again, these guys are still a lot shorter than the first wave. But that is the Pretender Beasts. And if you think the Pretender Beasts was a little odd, wait till you see what's coming up next. Now here we have what is known as an Ultra Pretender with roadblock here and a pretender vehicle with road grabber. Now I'm going to show off road grabber a little bit more than I am roadblock. Roadblock is a character that suffers from what we've known, come to know in the fandom as GPS, called Gold Plastic Syndrome. This character right here, as you can see, is made completely out of gold plastic, save for his legs. Now the problem with this is this gold plastic deteriorates over time and is prone to breakage. 
Sometimes it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. So needless to say, he's on here and I'm not gonna fool with him too much. But how the Ultra Pretenders work is they came with a secondary pretender figure. Roadblock, the inner bot, would slide in the back of this guy, who in turns transforms into a hovercraft or some kind of jet. Another one of the very simple pretender transformations. So there, there's your little jet. So he could actually sit in there and ride. Now when you go to combine them all together, he would actually fit inside him like a regular pretender. So you'd fit him inside here. Turn him back into robot mode. And then this shell would actually open up to fit that guy in there. So almost like one of those Russian nesting figures. Gold guy goes into purple guy, purple guy goes into vehicle, and it's all in one nice compact form. But alas, I have never transformed him, nor will I ever will. So let's go take a more in-depth look to the Pretender vehicle, Road Grabber. I always liked this one just because of how evil it looked. But this makes this whole line with the vehicles makes no sense for me because it's a transformer. A transformer turns into a vehicle. So you're going to have a robot who turns into a vehicle hide inside a vehicle. Okay. So anyway, how this works. Shell pops open, reveals the robot inside. Robot pops out. Fold the arms back just like any other pretender. You can take the gun off the top. And he's ready for battle. Now in order to transform this guy, take the gun out. Fold everything around. I get my fingernails in there. There we go. So he turns into a jet. Let me turn his head around. But, like with a lot of these pretenders, it's all parts forming. You have to take pieces off the other toy to clip onto this one. Remember how to do it. So it goes underneath. And there you have your lame jet mode. Now the vehicle turns into something as well. Bring all this up. And over. Take the guns out. Put the guns on top of here. Oops, let me get this under. There we go. Maybe, bear with me, it's been a long time since I've fooled with these guys. Let's see. There we go. So it turns into a battle platform that the robot can in turn pilot. He's got a little hole on his foot that matches right there. And there we go. So he's got his attack vehicle. And that is the pretender vehicles and ultra pretenders. Now here we have examples of classic pretenders and a mega pretender. Let's go over the classic first because I'm going to save the best for last. The classic pretenders came out near the end of G1 and it was Hasbro's way to bring back old favorites in a new line. 
For the Autobots, you had Jazz, Grimlock, and Bumblebee. But for the Decepticons, you had Starscream. Now, just going over the shell, I'm not a big fan of the human shells, but I do like this one. Yeah, that kind of futuristic knight look. Got his pointy helmet. He came with this laser gun. Now, I made the sword. I found an old sword and used some chrome paint to soup that up a little bit because I thought that really, really looked good. Like the rest of the Pretenders, you pop his shell off. Starscream fits on the inside. Now, to get him to fit, though, you had to take all these pieces off of him to actually attach to the shell. The wings would pop off Starscream and fit into the back of the figure. Now, Starscream himself, he is... Yeah, that's supposed to be Starscream. It is not a good version. A completely black face, simplistic transformation. Doesn't really do his character much justice. But, let me show you what he looks like transformed. At least with the classics pretenders, they looked like what they were supposed to be when they transformed and you didn't have to tell everybody it's a Cybertronian vehicle. It's easily just spin these wings around, but they're not being cooperative today. There we go. Flip the wings down, fold the arms. You take the guns and actually plug them into the back of his feet. And there we go. Not a bad looking jet. They could have at least done the legs in the same color gray, at least on top, to match. But not a bad vehicle mode for a pretender. And now let's take a look at my personal favorite pretender and my favorite character of the line. This is Thunderwing. And he is what's known as a Mega Pretender. Being the fact that the Pretender Shell can transform as well as the Inner Robot. Now in the comics, the Inner Robot didn't even exist. This was Thunderwing. They showed him transform and they showed him as this robot, but never once was he known to be a Pretender. He was very popular in the comics because he was a Decepticon leader that was able to take the matrix of leadership from Optimus Prime and corrupt it. But anyway, enough of the comic. Let's go to the toy itself. I love this guy. He's very reminiscent of a Japanese demon. If you look at his face, you got that Japanese samurai mask. Now his box art's really good. His box art, he looks... Mm, very demonic in the same way they put him in the comic book he was he was mean he was nasty I love it <clears throat> excuse me if you can tell from all this video I've been dealing with some allergies so I've got this awesome voice going on right now let's transform Thunderwing he's very simple to transform pop the back here flip the whole front section around hook that on top fold the feet in Move the legs up and very carefully put the wings back into place. And now we take the guns, hook the guns to the bottom, and there is his futuristic spacecraft mode that the Pretender shell turns into. But wait, there's more. Taking his inner robot, which is not a bad figure compared to some of the pretenders. Of course, he is small. Here he is compared to one of the others. And he slides right inside Thunderwing. But to transform him, fold the arms in like most of the pretenders. Head down. Tail fins up. The wings fold out together, move the feet up, and squish the legs and feet together, and there you have a small jet. And you can actually put the weapon on top of it for storage. So there you go. But another feature of the Mega Pretender, the small jet can hook 
to the larger jet making one awesome looking vehicle. Now in the comics when Thunderwing transformed this is what he looked like. But like I said they didn't even utilize or even mention the inner robot. Let me put the gun on here too. So there he is. I'm very proud of Thunderwing. This character here, oh, so much for that cam camera angle. I totally restored this guy. When I bought him, he was tore up, jacked up, discolored. He had Sharpie on him. His stickers were tore off. I cleaned him up really good, added new stickers, and now he's one of the pride and joys in my collection. So there you have your classics and mega pretenders. Now, last but not least, we have the Pretender Monsters. This was a six-figure set that combined into the mega robot, Monstructor. Now, what was different about these figures, that the Pretender shells were made out of rubber. No articulation whatsoever. They're just one solid rubber piece. Now, to remove the robot, you just pop the back, pull out the figure, which, like the Pretender Beast, is just a robotic representation of the outer shell. Pop the back plate back on. Remove the gun. Transform the robot. Now, this is really hard. Move the legs down. Pop the head up. And place the weapon. And there we go. Now, Monstructor is what is considered a Holy Grail figure for us G1 collectors because he is so hard to find, complete, and unbroken. As I mentioned, full, excuse me, as I mentioned before, GPS Gold Plastic Syndrome plagues this character. Two of the figures, Slog, which forms the chest, and Bristleback, who forms the arm, are notorious for having this. Now, I lucked out with Slog. He was my very first purchase, and he was 100%, so no issues. But Bristleback, on the other hand, that's my third one. I've had to Frankenstein him together from others just to make him complete. Prime example is I used one of them as a filler for his shell. Pop the back off here. When I got him, he was complete, other than this discoloration at the top, but I went to transform him and his legs just shattered. It just vaporized in my hand. So I more or less scrapped him, but I did steal his arms to put on that one. So when you're a G1 collector, you have to do that quite a lot with the old figures. You just buy broken ones and scrap them for parts. The Monstructor here, I'm so happy to have one complete. He took me almost two years to find all the missing pieces for. The hardest piece to find was a weapon that goes in ice pick that you don't even use in the combined form. Now, even though he is a combiner and he's stressed to be the mighty Monstructor, he's no bigger than the original Optimus Prime. And you compare him to another pretender, there, there's not much mega about him. But still, he's a great piece to have in your collection and one of the most highly sought after pretenders. And there you go, guys. That's my take on the G1 pretenders. While not perfect toys, they're great characters and make awesome display pieces in your collection. But be prepared to spend some money. These guys, just because of all the little pieces and parts and accessories, finding complete ones is going to be a challenge and an expensive one. Unless you want to piece them together over the course of some time. Now granted, I just went over the Decepticon versions. There are a lot more out there. There's a lot more Autobots than Decepticons. And quite a few of them are plagued with the horrible GPS syndrome that uh, is the plague of us collectors. Now this video has ran way longer than I intended, so I appreciate you watching if you made it all the way through. If you want, 
hit that like button, help me out, or even subscribe. I plan on doing more of these videos, and as I said in the beginning, this is part one of my series on Generation 1 gimmicks. We've got Headmasters, Target Masters, Power Masters, and others to look forward to. So my friends, thank you for watching. This is Patriot Prime, signing out. Be good to each other. It might just be fantastic. Don't